I was uh, noticing some things happening in, um, in culture more broadly. And uh, in particular, there were these four kind of forces I was noticing. Uh, and these, these were both things that had to do with online culture, but also just culture more broadly. And I just want to briefly touch on, on what they are, because they were very informative to this tool way of thinking. Um, so the first was compression. I was noticing that um, uh, communication was getting shorter and shorter and more and more compressed. And this actually predates internet. Like this goes all the way back to letter writing or even before that to conversation being replaced with letter writing, being replaced with phone calls, then faxes, then emails, then text messages, then chats, then tweets. And each of these things gets shorter and faster and more and more compressed than the thing that came before it. And, um, uh, but we're at this interesting point now where we're kind of like tweeting, like that's sort of the the mode right now. But it's unclear that there's another level of compression after that. Like I think we're close to hitting a terminal velocity of compression. Like it, we can't compress more. There might be one more level of like grunting at each other or something, but <laughs> I think it's like pretty close to maxed out. And so what do we do? Like do we bounce back in the other direction, like craving more depth again? Do we keep tweeting? Do we abandon technology altogether? Like what happens? So that was a question I had. Uh, and related to that was disposability, um, this idea that like we are this generation who's okay with the fact that the vast majority of the self-expression we put out there into the world, our thoughts, our opinions, our feelings, will be swallowed up moments after we post it by the torrent of new stuff that comes after it. And so communication and self-expression in this way takes on a disposable quality. It's almost like you go to the store and you buy a hamburger and you eat the hamburger and then you throw away the wrapper. It's like that, that sort of thing, like you get what you need, you consume it and then you throw it away. Uh, and a lot of communication takes that, like you even think of these things flaring up, like being huge cultural phenomena, like the Coney video, like a month ago, everyone's like, oh, Coney, Coney, Coney. And, like, who's talking about that now? Like, things have these very short half-lives now. I think I saw a post on the Bitly blog a few weeks ago that the average half-life of a, of a link is about three or four hours. Uh, and then it's like human attention all of a sudden at a species level looks at one thing and then it gets bored and it moves to the next thing. And that's, that's what's happening. A lot of stuff is very disposable now. Um, the third thing I saw was that um, curation was replacing creation as the predominant mode of self-expression. Uh, and this has been dramatically helped by services like Tumblr and Pinterest and Twitter that make it very easy to assemble lists and boards of things that you find cool or interesting and use those things to express yourself. Uh, and so it's a, it's a little bit like walking into somebody's apartment and judging them as a person by the stuff they have hanging on the walls uh, instead of actually speaking with them. And, um, and I, I think that the, it is possible to, to um, uh, express yourself through curation, for sure. Uh, that is a mode of, of, of self-expression, but it's become so dominant in the last few years that there's been a big decline in direct creation, this whole like remix culture and pointing to things. Um, I can give you one data point in We Feel Fine, the emotional search engine I made in 2005, uh, that, w that used to collect around 20,000 feelings per day in 2005. And now in 2012, seven years later, the overall number of web users is way more, but it collects around 8,000 feelings a day. So the overall amount of self-expression on the web has dramatically declined in the last few years, and I think that's largely because of the rise of curation. Um, and then the fourth is, uh, is self-promotion, and um, it's like we're all sort of living our lives as advertisements now. Um, and uh, we assemble these online personas um, through our Facebook profiles and uh, our personal websites and all of these things, and it's sort of like this big, you know, species level pissing contest where everyone is trying to see how awesome they can seem to the people that encounter them online. Like, look how hot my girlfriend is, look how wild that party was, look how fun my trip to France was, all of this stuff. And it's, um, it's almost like we're turning our lives into ads. Uh, and that's a new thing too. I think there's always been the conventional wisdom in like art school that the one thing you can do that's best for your career is to develop an online brand around yourself. And that, that is true, I think, when it comes to um, business stuff and developing a creative brand, it's good. But we're increasingly doing that as humans too, like as, as individuals, we're trying to, um, we're trying to kind of advertise ourselves. And that, that's another trend I, th I saw that was kind of weird to me. And so for each of these things, I was interested in offering a kind of counterforce. So uh, where there was the compressioning, I was interested in seeing like a deepening. Um, when there was the disposability, I was interested in building more of a timelessness. Uh, for the curation, I was interested in seeing a return to creation. And in the case of self-promotion, I was interested in helping foster more of like a contemplative self-reflection. Uh, self